I'm gonna read today, uh, Sunday, it's December 20th. It's just spectacular having all this beautiful snow. I'm just gonna give you a little pan of the, uh, the beauty. See my kids up there sledding. We made a trail for them. Today, several strands of truth that I want to gather together out of um, Exodus and uh, and tie it all to Christmas. It's going to be a bit of a challenge to do, but I'm going to give it my best shot. In Exodus chapter 17, we see the Lord supplying water from the rock. I'm going to start at 1. Then all the congregation of the sons of Israel journeyed by stages from the wilderness of Sin, which is in the southern part of Israel. It's literally a wilderness. There's just not much water there. It's, it's fairly flat, and it gets flash floods once in a while. It's a very tough country to navigate and journey through and live in. According to the commandment of the Lord, and they camped at Rephidim, and there was no water for the people to drink. Don't you feel like like that today? That there's a lack of either truth being preached in your area, or you have a lack of sincere, honest fellowship from people of like mind and commitment, and you feel like you're abandoned. And that's the way these Israelites felt. They they wandered in a very difficult place. Not only was it difficult, there was no water, which compounded the problem, which also made the area difficult. And I would say that America, there's little water representing life and truth that is flowing with much power in the church. And as I've been saying, that this is tied directly to our unholy behavior and our lack of commitment to get to the bottom of what ails us. What I mean by that is there's more for us all to have in God. There's more power, there's more signs, there's more wonders, and there's more truth to understand, and there's more holiness, there's more power in our unity, there's more of the of the work of the Spirit that we could all have, but it's because we're missing something. And and the and the reflection of yesterday was what are we missing? And um, we know there's idols in the land. We know there's idols in our churches. We know there's idols in our homes. Why are we unwilling to get rid of our idols? We have no water. I mean, we don't even realize we're thirsty and we're thirsty. Because we have other things that satisfy us. These are our gods. These are the things of the flesh. These are the things of society. These are the things that make us happy. Money. Being able to shop. Being able to buy new stuff, or at least put it on a, a charge card. The, the idea of, of, of enjoying life without God, life without God. It's, it's, it's living as though God really doesn't exist. It's called practical atheism. It, there's no reference to God about, okay, what do you want me to do today? How do you want me to move today? There's not this urgency in your heart to just do whatever the Lord says. This is my son, Zachariah, who happened to follow me down today. Uh, there's no urgency to be sure or determined to make sure that we are in the way of God, that we are not offending Him in any way, that we are keeping His commandments. We are listening to His voice. Verse 2 says, Therefore the people quarreled with Moses. Isn't that what we're doing today? Quarreling and arguing, you know, picking sides, divided very divided and they quarreled with Moses who is a type of Christ here but with with the leader the only guy that they could really trust in the wilderness the only one that could supply him the water nobody else could yet they quarreled with Moses like we quarrel with Christ we say why are you doing this or, or why aren't you blessing me or um, they, they're bigger than me or all those typical uh, attitudes of, of a rebellious people we are that we are a rebellious people that's us that's you and me. We come from a rebellious nation. We are predicated, our whole life, a life in existence is predicated in rebellion. 
established as such. Give us water that we may drink, they said. And Moses said to them, why do you quarrel with me? Why do you test the Lord? See, the Lord's testing us. We're not allowed to test him. He's already said, I am God and there is no other. He's made that clear. You, you can't test God. He's going to reveal to him, look, I buried the Egyptians in the sea. I did the 10 plagues. You weren't hit. I killed their firstborn. Yours are alive. Why are you testing me? He says, you can't test the Lord. With Moses has said, give us water that we may drink. And Moses said to them, why do you quarrel with me? Why do you test the Lord? One of the things that we're going to establish here is that this rock is not just some random rock. It's not just what God's going to do is he's going to do some amazing things here. But all of us are consigned to this place of rebel and quarreler and person who's unthankful because God has been so lavishly good to these people yet when they go through a couple days of leanness they go through a little season of deprivation what is the tendency of their heart the tendency of their heart is to to believe the worst they said why verse 3 but the people thirsted for water and they grumbled against Moses and they said why now have you brought us up from Egypt to kill us and our children along with our livestock from thirst just feel like the Lord wants to say to us right now why are you so thirsty why haven't you even figured out that you should be thirsty none of the waters that you're drinking from none of these wells that you're digging up none of this work that you're doing with your hands is really going to satisfy you that's what the Lord is saying today why do you continue to drink water that will never satisfy it will just give you a temporary satisfaction just like the Israelites to know they won and Egypt was, Egypt was dead proves to us that they did not really receive the salvation of the Lord as of yet they don't understand who the Lord really is and I think sadly we present the Lord so weakly and so uh, small that people don't even know if they make a profession of faith who they're really serving. They don't know anything about the Lord. They don't know uh, what the purpose is of being a Christian, you know, what the objectives are, what the guidelines are, what the, what the blueprint really, really says because they're ignorant of the Word of God and they're ignorant of our history. They're ignorant of the Old New Testament as really one testament, one revelation from God. As we get into Exodus 34, we're going to see more of this as the thing theme develops. In chapter 20, they're going to get the revelation of God at Mount Sinai of the Ten Commandments about God's holiness, that you can't play games with God. And he goes, so Moses cried out to the Lord saying, what shall I do to this people? A little more and they will stone me. Here Moses is a beautiful picture of Christ in that he goes to the Father on behalf of the people and he puts up with the abuse, as it were. He, he, he says, why are you testing the Lord? But ultimately, he's taking the hits because he represents the Lord. He is his messenger. So those of us who are called to be Christ's messenger, the Father's messenger, to gather in the bride of Christ, to get her ready for his second coming, for his catching away, those of us, we are aligned with him, and therefore, if things don't go well, they will blame us. Well, I thought you were leading us to a good life, the blessedness of God, peace. But there's agitation, there's infighting, there's financial problems, there's uh, attacks by the enemy. That's what we wrestle with, because we, 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 people don't, they don't want to seek the Lord with all their heart and war through all the hardship. They want it to be easier, more instant-like, like our society. We want things quickly. We don't want to persevere over long periods of time to determine the will of the Lord. We want stuff in our time, which is not God's time. Then the Lord said to Moses, Pass before the people and take with you some of the elders of Israel and take in your hand your staff with which you struck the Nile and go. Behold, I will stand before you there on the rock at Horeb. 